Good evening and welcome here to Chakalaka Park in Oxford, where tonight we bring you championship action. The number one seeded Oxford Yellow Jackets, as you see there on the screen, taking on the number two seed Alexandria Valley Cubs here from Chakalaka Park. I'm Grady Sapp alongside Brandon Steele, and we have redubbed this place Hurricane Park after <laughs> last night's semifinal action in which the teams played in near hurricane force winds. And uh, tonight the winds are a little less than they were last night. So hopefully, Brandon, we won't free slam to death tonight. Well, it's going to be cold. The wind will be blowing about five miles an hour. We should drop into the 40s before the, the umpire drops the final call. But, uh, wow, Alexandria and Oxford, who's the best? I guess it depends on who you ask. If you live in northern Calhoun County or southern Calhoun County, these two teams are so equal after watching them last night. Pitching's good on both sides, along with batting and field. And uh, in my opinion, the keys to winning this game, know when to pull your pitcher. You know, if he's in trouble, you can't allow four or five runs to score because your pitcher's having a bad night. I don't think you can recover from that. Uh, two, costly errors. You know, uh, there's a difference between having an error and dropping a pop fly and uh, rope nobody on base, but it's a big difference to drop a pop fly when there's bases loaded and three or four score. Uh, and then, you know, three, play your game. Don't, don't get wrapped up with the emotions of this being Alexander and Oxford and just have fun. Well, the one thing that we saw out of both of these teams last night was the ability to get off the fast starts. Both teams had big innings in the first inning of their ball games last night. Alexandria responded after giving up a run in the top of the first with eight runs in the bottom of the first to blow the game with Piedmont open. And Piedmont not ever able to recover from that. And then on the nightcap, Oxford uh, holds serve in the top of the inning and they come down and put a six spot up on the board in the bottom of that first inning against Jacksonville and, and then added a six run third inning and that pretty much was the ball game last night for the for the Yellow Jackets so both of these teams can score runs and score them in a hurry. Yeah they're hot bats I mean like you said they get after it right after right, you know right at the start of the game and try to uh, smother their opponents you know uh, but you know it just depends I guess on the errors you know the weather's a lot different tonight than it was last night so I uh, can't blame that on the uh, the wins and losses, but uh, I think they would have both teams would have won regardless. I mean, it was just a uh, they showed their dominance. Well, they both had dominant starting pitchers last night. Borders for Alexandria and Turner for Oxford were really um, near flawless in their efforts last night. They pitched overpowering a speed and neither Piedmont nor Jacksonville were really able to solve the riddle that was the starting pitching for these two teams last night. Now, will that be the case tonight? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to watch and find out. I think that uh, if you look at the two teams and based on what we saw last night, I would give the power advantage to the Yellow Jackets. It looks Absolutely. like they've got some pop in the bats. And, of course, we saw the Grand Slam last night. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you uh, have not tuned in and watched that, you need to go back and uh, watch that because uh, that was spectacular in that third inning with the Grand Slam by McCullough. Gosh, it was. I, like you said, the ball seemed to carry a lot better uh, in that later game than it did earlier because uh, I know Alexander's got some power, but I don't think any of the balls we've seen made it to the warning track. But uh, Oxford was lighting it up last night with some good power hitting. They really were, and of course, it's a one and a two seed matchup. So, I guess the brackets held serve and uh, came out like they were supposed to. These two teams seeded appropriately. Alexandria even their record at five and five last night. Oxford, I believe, improved to a uh, seven and three mark last night with their win. So, uh, they're the two teams that um, came in rated the best, and it looks like they certainly are the best here in the county. Yeah, it seems to look that way. It looks like we're going to have the best on the best, so I'm looking forward to a good game. That should be a lot of fun. The Yellow Jackets and the Valley Cubs getting ready to go here at Chocolaca Park coming up in just a few minutes. We'll grab a timeout. You're watching live coverage of the 2018 Calhoun County Baseball Tournament on the Friday Night Network. Did you hear? You can get Cable One high-speed internet at an everyday low price. 100 megs, $55 a month, and save with free installation. All you have to do is call 855-CABLE-1. It's time to get the most out of your Wi-Fi with the best whole home streaming and surfing on all your devices. That's 100 megs, $55 a month, plus free installation. Now get high speeds like this at an incredible everyday low price. Get it now at 855-CABLE-1. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one-on-one -on -one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, 
Call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. Turn your old junk into quick cash. Head to Metters Auto Core Supply at 7435 Alabama Highway 144 in Alexandria today. They'll pay you cash for catalytic converters, copper, aluminum, brass, steel, cars, automotive cores, appliances, and much, much more. Not sure if they'll buy what you're selling? Call ahead at 256-892-0406. Get the money you need from the junk you don't want. Take it to Metters Auto Core Supply on Highway 144 in Alexandria. You'll leave happy with money in your pocket. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer with our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums. Our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. Did you hear? You can get Cable One high-speed internet at an everyday low price. 100 megs, $55 a month, and save with free installation. All you have to do is call 855-CABLE-1. It's time to get the most out of your Wi-Fi with the best whole home streaming and surfing on all your devices. That's 100 megs, $55 a month, plus free installation. Now get high speeds like this at an incredible everyday low price. Get it now at 855-CABLE-1. We welcome you back to Chakalaka Park on a beautiful late afternoon here in Oxford as we get set for the championship game between the Alexandria Valley Cubs and the Oxford Yellow Jackets here tonight. Both teams impressive in getting here. Alexandria has not really been challenged uh, winning both of their ball games by double digits and the Yellow Jackets, well, they've been pretty impressive as well rolling into the championship round and we'll see which team can get hot tonight. One thing, Brandon, as you alluded to a little earlier in our, our opening is the fact that both teams were the beneficiary of some errors last night. A lot of errors made in those two ball games, and uh, both Oxford and Alexandria were able to take advantage of those when the opportunities presented themselves. They did, and I gave a lot of thought to that. You know, well, what if Jacksonville wouldn't have made as many errors? You know, would have uh, would the score have been that high? Probably not, but I still think the the better team won the game. Uh, you know, there's going to be errors in baseball, but you know, I was kind of shocked to see the kind of errors we've seen. You know, uh, some pop flies and stuff when bases are loaded and uh, just just really costly errors. And you just can't have that play winning baseball. Of course, we, we talked about that possibility last night before the game started, especially in the outfield where you're trying to get under those balls as bad as the wind was. I'm sure it gave some of the outfielders fits, but but you didn't see the mistakes made by Oxford or Alexandria last night. Both of them played solid baseball games. They did, and the hitting was good. The pitching, I think, was the was the key. Like you said earlier, uh, both them pitchers, my God, uh, they were just humming it in there with that fastball and had good change-ups and uh, just kept the other team off balance, you know, and you throw that in there with some errors, and that's why you get those double-digit scores, I guess. Well, I think sometimes when you've got a pitcher that is so dominant, as the just take out the Oxford and, and Jacksonville game, when you have a pitcher that's as dominant as Turner was last night, you take away hope from your opponent because they're going up to the plate and they don't have a lot of hope of getting a hit as hard as he was throwing. And you know we saw Jacksonville not able to get a hit till um, I think what the sixth or fifth or sixth inning of that ball game last night before they actually had a hit. Yeah, I played baseball. I wasn't all that good, but you know it gets in your head. You know you see a hot shot pitcher up there on the mound throwing. Uh, no telling what, 85, 90 mile per hour fastballs. Uh, there's just nothing you can really do. It's already in your head when you get up to the plate, you know, and that's why I was talking about, you know, you can't let the emotions get the best of, uh, best of you in this game. You know, you just got to play and have fun and do the best you can, you know, because uh, this is some really talented pitchers up there on that mound. Let's take a look at uh, the rosters for each of these teams tonight. We'll start with the uh, Oxford Yellow Jackets, and as you see, just look down the list. I mean, you had guys all down that list. Brody Sire, Trey Higgins, Caden Higgins, and, of course, Brennan McCullough with the big blow last night, the grand slam in the third inning. But you see offense all the way down through that Yellow Jacket lineup. Oh, gosh, it's just loaded. Uh, they were still talking about that at work today, about that grand slam, uh, something else. And, of course, that's not to mention Jared Turner with the outstanding performance last night. Uh, for the Yellow Jackets, let's uh, take a look now at the Alexandria Valley Cubs as uh, there was no shortage of 
of big plays in that ball game. And really, uh, the Noah Prim, Justin Shaw, they all they had big games last night. And of course, your your starting pitcher last night, Jalen Borders, outstanding game that he threw against uh, against the Piedmont Bulldogs. Yeah, one thing that stood out with Alexandria watching them last night, you know, they even had a few errors, but you know, they wouldn't the costly ones, and they was able to to come back and you know didn't let them score them too bad in the game, and uh, they just played a dominant game. So. Well, and look at that roster for Alexandria. A lot of juniors and sophomores on that roster. It's a young baseball team. <laughs> Can't imagine what's going to look like next year. Woo. So that's some of the guys that you will see uh, performing tonight here for each of these two teams. The coaches are down at home plate and are exchanging lineup cards and uh, getting ready. We'll have the national anthem coming up here momentarily, and then we will be set to play baseball here on, again, a gorgeous late winter, I guess, if you will, Tuesday evening. Uh, it's almost spring. It's just almost. Yeah, it's almost. I keep reminding people that it's not till the 21st. So, yeah. So the I'll ask you because it's a, it's a weather question. You're sure. like a weather geek, and I mean you just get into that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start blaming you for this if something doesn't change. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting really tired of rain every weekend. Guess what? What? It's, it's gonna, gonna rain this weekend. It is. Yeah, it's gonna storm. But the good news is it's gonna be mild temperatures. So we're I gonna don't care about that. If it's raining, I can't get outside anyway. Well, yeah, you can. I mean, it's every weekend. Come on. Yeah, that every weekend. It's like every single Sunday it has rained. I know it's been three in a row. So, but it's not. It's going to be raining this weekend too. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Uh, well, I, I'm hearing coming in Friday afternoon, maybe now moving up and being out of here Saturday morning, and then back again early in the week. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. But I'm. I just want you to know. I, I know now why you like meteorology, because it's a job that you can do. And you can give the weather forecast. Today is going to be beautiful with sunshine. But there's a chance of a shower. <laughs> yeah, Can't rule out the chance. chance of a stray shower, so you're never wrong. Yeah, you can say that 10%. And if it rains, you like to say that was that 10%. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. I, figured out the, I figured out the racket you guys are up to. <laughs> um, we don't have any chance of rain tonight. Not a cloud in the sky here, so it's going to be a nice night for baseball. And uh, hopefully much less windy night tonight for baseball as well. Uh, tonight, starting pitcher for Alexandria is going to be... Um, Mize, and he is a knuckleballer, so we may see a lot of ground balls. Tanner Mize, number three, will be the starting pitcher for the Alexandria Valley Cubs tonight. So uh, we'll get a, a completely different kind of pitcher in this one for Alexandria than what we saw last night. A knuckleball pitcher? Yeah. What's that? Phil Necro was the famous knuckleballer? Yeah, from yeah the... he was. And, uh, made a, quite a career out of throwing the knuckleball. The only thing about the knuckleball, you can put the bat on it. You can. All right, we're going to get the national anthem here, so why don't we grab a quick timeout. We'll be back with the first pitch coming up here as the 2018 Calhoun County Baseball Tournament continues here on the Friday Night Network. Your pet is an important part of your family that returns love and care unconditionally. And right now is the best time to think about your pet's care for the spring months ahead. Greenbrier Animal Clinic in Anniston has been taking care of pets in the Calton County area for over three decades. Call now and schedule your pet for their annual vaccinations, flea and tick treatment, or grooming. Dr. Bill Brom and Dr. Elizabeth Main ensure your pet always sees a vet. X-ray lab and the latest surgical facilities on site ensures quality health care. Greenbrier Animal Clinic. Warm hearts, treating cold noses. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one-on-one -on -one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. Turn your old junk into quick cash. Head to Metters Auto Core Supply at 7435 Alabama Highway 144 in Alexandria today. They'll pay you cash for catalytic converters, copper, aluminum, brass, steel, cars, automotive cores, appliances, and much, much more. Not sure if they'll buy what you're selling? Call ahead at 256-892-0406. Get the money you need from the junk you don't want. Take it to Metters Auto Core Supply on Highway 144 in Alexandria. You'll leave happy with money in your pocket. 
The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. With our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums, our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. Turn your old junk into quick cash. Head to Metters Auto Core Supply at 7435 Alabama Highway 144 in Alexandria today. They'll pay you cash for catalytic converters, copper, aluminum, brass, steel, cars, automotive cores, appliances, and much, much more. Not sure if they'll buy what you're selling? Call ahead at 256-892-0406. Get the money you need from the junk you don't want. Take it to Metters Auto Core Supply on Highway 144 in Alexandria. You'll leave happy with money in your pocket. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one-on-one -on -one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. Did you hear? You can get Cable One high-speed internet at an everyday low price. 100 megs, $55 a month, and save with free installation. All you have to do is call 855-CABLE-1. It's time to get the most out of your Wi-Fi with the best whole home streaming and surfing on all your devices. That's 100 megs. $55 a month plus free installation. Now get high speeds like this at an incredible everyday low price. Get it now at 855 Cable One. Here at Chakalaka Park, the National Anthem just wrapping up and we're just about ready for baseball as the Oxford Yellow Jackets and the Alexandria Valley Cubs are going to get together and do battle tonight for the championship here of the 2018 County Tournament. Looks like Brody Sire will be the pitcher tonight for the Oxford Yellow Jackets. And we'll see, he's a lefty, so very different look coming off the mound tonight than what we saw last night with Jared Turner. Of course, we saw a uh, power pitcher in Turner last night. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can see any better pitching than what we saw last night. It was outstanding, it really was. And of course, uh, we had uh, Jalen Borders for Alexandria that, flew, that threw a great game in the uh, opener last night, the first semifinal. So we'll get a knuckleballer tonight in the uh, Alexandria Valley Cubs for Tanner Mice. So uh, very different styles of pitcher, it looks like, tonight. I'm kind of interested to see if the sire is going to be a little more of a, of a curveball off-speed stuff or if he's got the heater as well. He has completed his warm-up tosses, so we are ready to go. Leading off tonight for the Valley Cubs, that'll be Noah Prim. He is number one. In place, I believe, shortstop for the Valley Cubs. Had a couple of hits last night. So Sire will come set. And we're ready to go. First pitch in there, and that's a ball outside. Mr. Prim's always got a good eye, but yeah, his fastball's a little outside. Now brings it in, that one a little high. Looked like that was over the middle of the plate, but must have been up a little bit in the strike zone. So starts off with a 2-0 and count on Noah Prim. And there's one that's right down the heart. Strike one. Nothing fancy, he's just throwing some heat. Yep. I think these uh, Oxford pitchers feel pretty good about their stuff. Prim with a little check swing there, strike two. Painting that corner. And the 2-2 offering is swung on a miss by Noah Prim. That's a strikeout the first of the game. And that will bring Justin Shaw for the Valley Cubs. So a good start for Sire. Fell behind early, 2-0, and came back strong to three consecutive pitches to strike out Prim. That one's in there. Mm. It's like... Uh, he has started to settle down a little bit and find his location. Yeah, he's painting inside corner, outside corner. Curveball. 
that one misses, so that'll even it up at one and one. As we start to feel the wind <laughs> pick up just a little bit. I'm not saying anything. Yeah. There's a hit right down to first base and an easy out right there. Uh, stepping on the bag was Brennan McCull. Two, uh, two away ball here. Ball and the catcher, Mitch Welch, will step to the plate now for the Valley Cubs. He is number 11. Tenth grader. There's a pitch. Just in painted the right corner of the plate. Valley Cub fans thought that one was either a little outside or a little low. Umpire didn't see it that way. That one's high for ball one. He's real quick with his delivery, too. Mm -hmm. I like that. Don't waste time. That one is outside. So two and one now. He's got to be a little cautious with Mr. Welsh. He's got a lot of power. Now it takes a little more time in between this time. Does Sire now comes home. There's a high pop-up. from the back over the building. Out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Threw him a change up there and timing went quite right on it. Fouled it back. So two and two. And that one is outside. Good job by Sparks to knock that down. That's something he did a really nice job of last night on some pitches that were in the dirt. Kept them all in front of him. Ooh, that's worth a lot when you go to pitcher. And inside that. with that one. So see our first walk of the game and our first base runner for the Valley Cubs. Two with two away. Let's see if they go with a pinch runner here. Layton Ellison. Make his way to the plate now for Alexandria. Well, we got a runner on first, two outs. I don't think he'll probably worry about him too much and probably just get back to his fastball routine. Takes a long look over first, but comes home with the pitch, and that one's hit into the hole, and it gets past the shortstop. And all the way to third. There's the pinch runner. So Alexandria with something working here in the upper top of the first. The runners on the corners. And Sire gives up his first hit of the evening. Tried a little backhand action there and came up a little short. Well, this will be Nate McCallum stepping to the plate for the Cubs. See if he can deliver a big two out hit here and put the first run of the night across. Alexandria really don't want to leave no runner stranded. There's the pitch. That was in there for a strike. Really painting that outside corner with the pitches so far tonight. Yeah, he's doing a good job. When he's got his location in there, they're, they're awfully hard to hit. And he mixes in that little all-speed pitch in there. And that one, though, he misses badly outside, so one and one to count. I think they do that on purpose. Just you think so? Yeah, throw it out there and make you think the next one's going out there and then you'll paint that corner. So one and one are count. Here comes the pitch. That one fouled off to the right side. One ball, two strikes, so he can dig in his toolbox here. They don't have to give him anything to, to hit here. One and two count. Sire ready to come home. Swings it in there. And oh, he wanted that pitch. Didn't get it. That will even up the count. That one was close, Brandon. It was. Trying to paint that outside corner. Mm, that's got to be a hard one to take. If you are McCallum. But he did a good job of laying off of that one. And pitch over. Ooh, got so he got him. He did get him. My goodness. Ellison late getting back, and the first inning ends with a, with a pitch out over at first base. We're back with the bottom half of the inning coming up here on the Friday Night Network. 
The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. With our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums, our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. Eyes like taking his warm-up pitches here for the Valley Cubs. They failed to put anything across in that opening inning. They were uh, no hits, no runs, and uh, one error from the Yellow Jackets. Let's take a look at that last play, Brandon. Yeah. As it was close at first base, the pickoff move. Sire comes set, looks there. What a great shot we've got for you right there. And then comes, and uh, it was Ooh. it was a bang bang play. <laughs> Let's see. Got slow mo. He's safe. He's safe. I thought. Yeah. Yep. Looked like he got back just in time, but uh, bang bang play like that, the umpire's got to make the call. He doesn't have the uh, benefit of slow motion. Let me go down there and tell him. Uh, probably not. Okay. I'll stay here up here with you. Yeah. Mize completes the warm up tosses, and we are ready to go. But that was close, though. Yeah. Close play. Yellow Jackets got the call, and leadoff hitter will be your starting pitcher tonight, Rody Sire. We'll get things underway here for the Yellow Jackets facing Tanner Mize. So we're going to get to see a knuckleball. Yep, knuckleballer and Tanner Mize gets the start tonight for the Cubs. You can live by the knuckleball or die by the knuckleball. So we'll see. And he delivers that first one in there for a strike. Mm. Throw a knuckleball. Put your knuckle into it. I, I push it in. Really don't know. And there's a swing it. and a high pop fly coming back behind the screen. That's going to get out of play. But you know he practices that knuckleball in practice with his own hard hitters. So if they can't do anything with it, you know. Yeah. Now, Mize comes set, brings it home. There's a drive into left field. Back, back, and a good catch out there near the running track. Outstanding play there by the left fielder on a deep drive by Brody Sire as uh, we'll take a look at the replay. And uh, he gets good wood on this one. Good word. Goodness gracious. Well, technically, I guess it's good aluminum. Good aluminum. Yeah. And that was a high drive, and that was a nice diving catch out in the outfield. But that's what a knuckleball does, you know. You put it in play, pop them up. As long as you don't pop them up over yeah. the fence. All right, Fielder made a great play, Leighton Ellison. Uh, here's the first pitch, yeah. low and outside. <laughs> That was a knuckleball. That was a knuckleball. I wonder if he can throw in a fastball in the middle of it and really mix them up. Reese Howard is at the plate, takes ball two. Howard will step back in. And Mize will deliver behind in the count. That's low and inside for ball three. Reese Howard, a 5'9", because you see 130-pound junior here for the Oxford Yellow Jackets. And that's four straight balls for Mize. Mm. So runner aboard. And next up, the man of the Grand Slam, Brennan <laughs> McCullough from last night. He might not want to throw a knuckleball to him. He might want to be cautious with anything over the plate to him. He's got enough power to probably do something with the knuckleball. Yeah, the one he hit last night was an absolute no doubter. You can see how deep the outfield is playing for McCullough. Got obvious power. 
So here's Mize, runner aboard at first for the Yellow Jackets. No score in this one early on. And comes inside for his fifth consecutive ball. So the uh, location not working well here in the first inning for Mize. And bounces that one at the plate. Trying to advance in doing so. No doubt, he was going. Yep, had to run on that one. So Howard moves down to second base. And now McCullough with a runner in scoring position and a 2-0 count in his favor. Here's the pitch for Mize. That one was up a little bit, drilled to second base and in the put out there. So two away now in the inning. Well, he advanced the runners. Runner. Got Howard on third. Tate Adams now will step to the plate. Well, knuckleball, you can take a hard swing at it. It just won't do anything, will it? No. Gets it a lot of ground balls out of the knuckleball. Tate Adams now will stand in. Got the potential run 90 feet away. And it takes a strike from Mize. 5'9", 160-pound senior Adams. One of the Wiley veterans on the Oxford team. We'll take a look at ball one there. Knuckleball don't even look right floating across there, does it? <laughs> it has a different look to it. I think <laughs> as a batter, it takes you a lot of times some time to, to get accustomed to that. That one's high and outside. They'll get used to hitting on him, and then they'll throw a fastball thrower in there and that start all over. There's a hits him. That's something we saw a lot of last night was hit batters, and uh, we get our first one of the night here as Adams takes one for the team, gets on down to first base. So runners on the corners now for the Yellow Jackets. And coming to the plate, that'll be number four, Caden Higgins, who uh, had a good night last night in that win for the Yellow Jackets. So. Well, I've made up my mind if I'm gonna be hit by a pitch, I wanna be hit by a knuckleball. It didn't look too bad, huh? Nah. nah. Yeah, that's not about speed. It's about movement and location. I think I could take it. Well, if you want when it's uh, over, we'll run down and, and see if we'll hit you with one. <laughs> I'm sure he couldn't miss. <laughs> Higgins will stand in with runners on the corners. in there for a strike. Had a little something on that one. He's going to fake the throw over to third base. That's something I've never seen. It's still, still home plate. You've never seen it in a game. Well, you saw your first grand slam last night, so you never know. Maybe put down a squeeze and play here. The suicide squeeze. He is going to put down a bunt. Hit it a little too hard. It's going to go foul. So that one is a strike two. Like the effort, though. Yeah. If it had that win, might have saved it. Yeah. So Howard has to retreat back to third base, and Caden Higgins will make his way back up to the plate for the Yellow Jackets. Mm -hmm. Here's the pitch, and that one's up for Fast Mize. Fastball high. Oh, now the pitcher gets away from Mize as the they throw back from the catcher, and that's going to advance the runner down to second base. Nah, that's not a big deal. No. 
See the flag moving out there in the outfield, so still some wind out here tonight. I can feel my fingers, though. Yeah, so far. What wind there is is blowing out, and that's low. So with the count evened up at two and two now on Caden Higgins. He's a senior. Drives one down the line in left field. That's going to get down, and, and that's going to play two of them for the Yellow Jackets, and they're off to the good start again. Caden Higgins with a stand-up double puts his team on the board first. Mm. Knuckleball hung over the plate. Caden was able to get it out there to left field and nowhere to go except to the fence with it and score some runs. So the Yellow Jackets draw first blood here tonight. And uh, we saw him get off to that hot start last night, and a lot of that damage was done with a couple of outs in the first inning. So uh, you still got a runner in scoring position in Caden Higgins, and now at the plate, the man we saw do all the damage for Oxford from the mound last night, or most of it, that is Jaron Turner. And uh, Jaron, of course, plays first base when he's not pitching. Higgins down at second, Turner stands in. And he's hit. Second hit batsman of the inning. Yeah, the old Uncle Ball traveled right there and hit him on the gluteus maximus. So first and second now for Oxford. And up to the plate will be number three, Trey Higgins. So Caden down at second, and Trey's going to try to bring him home. Trey with a good night last night for Oxford as well at the plate. Pretty much all of them, huh? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Runners on first and second. Demise in a little spot of trouble here in the first inning, giving up two. And this is outside with ball one. Just a freshman. Trey Higgins. And that one well outside. So Mize is really having trouble getting that knuckleball across the plate tonight. Yeah, it's got a lot of movement on it. All right now it's not moving to the right spots. Not at all. Gets one across there. So the count will move to two and one. Also just got some good hitters. Wow. Mize checks the runner at second. Higgins. And will come in with ball three to the outside. And he is in danger of loading them up here for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, he tried his fastball there and tried to hit the outside corner and just didn't quite make it. Just a little bit outside. Three balls, one strike. See if he goes back to his knuckleball. And this is outside. Nope, that one they say is a strike. As Trey Higgins didn't think so and started toward first base, and the umpire said, not so fast, young man. Not so fast. Oh, Lee Corso. Not, Not so, so fast. fast. <clears throat> so full count, two on, two out. Here for Trey Higgins. Facing Tanner Mize. Hits it right up the gut to the second baseman. Should be an easy out at first. It is, and the inning is over. But the Yellow Jackets get a couple. And they lead it two to nothing here as we head to the top of the second on the Friday Night Network. <laughs> 
Did you hear? You can get Cable One high-speed internet at an everyday low price. 100 megs, $55 a month, and save with free installation. All you have to do is call 855-CABLE-1. It's time to get the most out of your Wi-Fi with the best whole home streaming and surfing on all your devices. That's 100 megs, $55 a month, plus free installation. Now get high speeds like this at an incredible everyday low price. Get in now at 855-CABLE-1. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one-on-one -on -one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. Nate McCallum stands in now for the Valley Cubs as we move to the top of the second inning. Oxford with two in the bottom of the first. Swing and a miss for McCallum on the offering from Brody Sire. So two runs on a hit in that first inning for the Yellow Jackets. And a strike in there by Sire, so he jumps out quickly on Shaw, 0-2. Quick approach. And that one in the dirt from Brody Sire. There is a shot down the first base line and Turner over to knock it down. Good play at first base. Good hustle. And actually, that's Brendan McCullough, I should say, at first base. Mr. Grand Slam to us. Yes, sir. <laughs> put the, tried to put a punt down, bunt down, it ends up being strike one. I think Cunningham got him a bunt last night, didn't he? Yeah. It is your left fielder, Jalen Cunningham. One and one now as that pitch misses. Got a lot of speed. Fastball just a little low. So two and one the count now. Championship game here of the Calhoun County Baseball Tournament. And that one's in there from Sire to even the count at two and two. Mercy. <clears throat> Good fastball. He's really got some control tonight with it. Time taken by Cunningham. One away here early on in the top of the second inning for the Valley Cubs. They have yet to put a hit in play. And there's a foul ball over the first base dugout. Count will stay at two and two. A good cut on it, just a little slow. Hard to get around that fastball. And he will miss outside with that one. So three and two, run them full here on Jalen Cunningham. And walks another. So Cunningham gets down to first and another base runner on forward for the Valley Cubs. Now it'll be Jalen Borders who will step to the plate. Did such a great job pitching last night. Plays first base for the Valley Cubs. Very good pitcher. I bet he's an even better hitter. 11th grader. Pitch is a little high and outside. So it takes ball one there. Still takes a little time there to look over to the third base coach and get the signal, get the sign. And Sire said it took a little too much time, so I'll take a minute here. Looks over at first and 
Stairs at first for a long time, and time taken by Borders. <laughs> I never did call timeout when I was a batter. I wanted to get it over with. Did you? Mm -hmm. You were that bad. <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> nerves, man. Nerves. nerves. I hear you. Nerves. <laughs> Now everybody settles back in. Mize will come home this time and a swing and a miss by Borders. So one and two the count. Good. One on, one out. Good cut. Just couldn't get around on fastball. And Jalen Borders, 6'7", 220 pounds, a junior. What? How tall? 6'7". That one is outside, so it'll be two balls and a strike now on Borders. Six seven. Yep. Hulk Hogan was six seven. Really? Mm-hmm. He looks bigger. That's tall. Kind of a check swing. Excuse me, foul and strike two on borders. <laughs> six seven. Wow. I bet he's a good basketball player. I would think so. My sets, takes a look over at first again, and now comes home with a pitch in there. There's another foul ball, a little bit late again on the fastball offering from Brody Sire. Pitch is low, and base given up as Cunningham will have it easily. No throw down. On ball three, that was low, and uh, Sparks going to have a hard time getting up and getting that one there in time. Good decision not to throw it and get it away from you. Yeah. Now we've got a conference with the umpires. First base umpire coming in to say something to the home plate. He's saying, wow, did you see how fast he got down to second? Yes, he was really quick. That's what he's saying. And he gave a sign over to the Doug out there at Oxford. I'm not sure what that's about. Full count. Nope. Two balls, two strikes. One out. Yeah. Yeah, this goes cool. yeah, I thought it was supposed to be 3 2. If it was 3 2 just a moment ago, and they took a ball off the board. I'm not sure why. <laughs> I like the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Play a little background here as the uh, coach and the umpire get together. How you doing? Good. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Good stuff. All right. They say two and two is up on the board. Borders takes a look at ball three, which I thought was ball four. I did too. What do I know there? Yeah. I'm only sitting here writing it down. Goes after the low ball and misses. That was ball four. The border swings it, and he'll take a seat. And it will be up to Brennan Brown, who is number five for the Valley Cubs, to bring a run across. He's got Cunningham down on second, running in scoring position. Oh, you don't want to leave nobody stranded. Brown is a junior. How tall is he? Brennan Brown is 5'10", 160 pounds junior. Junior. There's a strike in there for Mize. And see, looking at him, he looks small, and I'm 5'10", so I feel pretty bad about myself now. Yeah, 5'10", so it's pretty tall. That's pretty. Six, seven, wow. Yeah, I guess it's stepping in there after borders that makes him look shorter. He's in a tad better shape than me, though. Hey, round's a shape. It is a shape. That's true. One and one are count. It's 
Sire hits it in the dirt. And again, great job by Sparks, keeping that one in front of him, doesn't allow the runner to advance. Mm. Priceless to have a catcher can do that. And Brown can bring home the first run for the Valley Cubs if he can get the first hit for the Valley Cubs. Sire. And the pitch is swung on and missed. Tip back, foul tip. So two and two now the count on Brown. He pops it up. And runs out of room. More sound effects, heard some glass breaking. Mm. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> two balls, two strikes, two outs. And it was low again, and again, Sparks has to dig it out of the dirt. And three and two. And let's run the count full again. Trying his curveball there, but he keeps hitting in the dirt a little bit. Luckily, he's got a good catcher. Can put a stop to it. Low with ball four there, so runners on first and second. Now he comes with another opportunity with runners in scoring position. Seth Slayton now the batter. He is the third baseman for the Valley Cubs. Runners on first and second again. Two out though. There's a pitch. That one's high. For ball one. They don't look like Alexander's being very aggressive with the bats. They're just kind of letting him make his throws and take the free pitches. There's a strike in there from Sire. That was always my strategy. Yeah, take, take the pitches. Take the pitch. I bet you can't throw me three in a row. I usually struck out. Strike two. Ball, two strikes, two out. So he's ahead on the batter. He can kind of throw what he wants to here. A couple of pitches. Don't have to give him anything to swing at. And swing and a miss. And that will end the inning. So Sire gets out of a little trouble. And in the top of the second, Oxford headed to the bottom with a two-run lead here on the Friday Night Network. Turn your old junk into quick cash. Head to Metters Auto Core Supply at 7435 Alabama Highway 144 in Alexandria today. They'll pay you cash for catalytic converters, copper, aluminum, brass, steel, cars, automotive cores, appliances, and much, much more. Not sure if they'll buy what you're selling? Call ahead at 256-892-0406. Get the money you need from the junk you don't want. Take it to Metters Auto Supply on Highway 144 in Alexandria. You'll leave happy with money in your pocket. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hatt, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, and you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer with our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums. Our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. Did you hear? You can get Cable One high-speed internet at an everyday low price. 100 megs, $55 a month, and save with free installation. All you have to do is call 855-CABLE-1. It's time to get the most with the best whole... Just a for bottom of the second inning here from Sakalaka Park. First up for the Yellow Jackets here in inning two is Carson Lindsay. Carson Lindsay will face Tanner Mice. Yellow Jackets on top. Two runs on a hit. They've also committed one error in this one. And Lindley will take strike one. Sparks on deck. He is the catcher for the Yellow Jackets. A good catcher, too. Yes, he is. There's a late swing by Lindley. Just kind of punches it. Down to second base, and uh, Shaw will swing that over to Borders, and one out here for the Valley Cubs. Well, the knuckleball, knuckleball did what it was supposed to again. Yep. Okay. 
Sparks with the drive, left field. Cunningham drifting back, going back over his head. It's going to get to the fence or to the track. And digging hard is Cade Sparks, and he's in with a stand-up double for the Oxford Yellow Jackets, so they're threatening again here in the bottom of or the second inning. What can you say? You know, that knuckleball, uh, he got a hold of it. He did indeed, lifted it and drove it over Cunningham's head out there in left field. And he tracked it down about the warming track. 325 to the foul poles in each field. 375 to right center and left center and 390 to dead center field. He had it, uh, the grand slam taken out last night to about over the 375 sign there in left center field. Mr. Sire, he flied out his first at bat. So back to the top of the order for Oxford. Sire going to look at strike one. He hit it pretty solid his first time out, so see if he can get under it again. Here's some eyes. Swing and a foul tip. So 0 2 now quickly on Brody Sire. Chance to help his own calls out here. He can give you the hit to plate Caden Sparks. Only one out and got a runner on second. So I'm sure they'd like to get him over in the third base or get a base hit and get him home. And that pitch outside from Mice, so ball one. He sure is playing way off that bag on second. Reaches out and punches it in the hole for a base hit. Cunningham will charge in, and they're going to have to hold the runner at third and dig in for second, and in there is Brody Sire. So he'll get to second on the fielder's choice there, and it'll be runners at second and third. For Howard, Reese Howard up for his second look at it tonight, and Oxford with their third hit of the night there, delivered by Brody Sire. Mr. Howard walked his first at that. Sure, he wouldn't mind to get another one and get the bases loaded. But a hit would be nice. Reese Howard takes strike one. Oxford with a couple of more runners in scoring position here. Trying to extend the lead. Swing and a miss. He went after a low ball there. That knuckleball just the bottom <laughs> fell out of that one. Yes, that was, that was textbook. Beautiful pitch. Couldn't resist. Two strikes. Swing and a miss. Oh, Down on strikes is Reese Howard. That knuckleball looked better than that at bat than I've seen the whole ball game, so he might be getting hot with it. Yeah. Needs to. Brennan McCullough steps to the plate. Two on, two out for McCullough. Chance to deliver another big hit for his team. He Ten. grounded out to second base his first at bat. He's got some power, though. Here's the offering from Mize. That one's high. It's a ball one. If you're looking at that pitch, it looks like it'd just be so easy to hit, but it's not. Got enough movement on it, it's never easy. 
There's a shot right up the middle. It's losing the footing, and one run is across, and everybody's going to be safe. As the ball hit straight to Justin Shaw, but lost his footing, and uh, that'll be another run in for the Yellow Jackets. Hit it to second base again, but this time uh, yeah. second baseman fell down, yeah. and they're gonna, he made it home. They're going to rule that a hit for McCullough, so the fourth hit of the night for Oxford. Now Tate Adams. That's kind of sad because knuckleball did what it was supposed to. Call it being a power hitter was just able to put it on the ground, but uh, nothing's guaranteed. Runners on the corners now for Adams. Oxford up by three. And that's low, and now the pump fake and quick snap throw back to third, trying to catch the runner napping. Couldn't do it, so second and third now with runners in scoring position for Oxford. Adams got hit by a pitch his first time at bat. High for ball one. Two outs, one ball, one strike. Pitch, that one is in there for a strike. Good He's couple. getting that strike right at the knees tonight. He is. He threw two high ones and then got him right there across the knees. So now he's ahead of a count. One ball, two strikes. Got a little something to play with now. A little breathing room. There's a drive right over the head into the center field of the second baseman. Shaw tried to leap and get it. Couldn't do it. Two runs are across, and Oxford now leads this one five to zip. Big hit there by Tate Adams. The single has got the Yellow Jackets in business, and we'll get a visit to the mound, and that might be all for Mize. We'll see. It's a start to give up the hits now, and indeed, that's going to be it for Tanner Mize. They'll go to the bullpen looking for the left-hander. Mm. You know, we talked about that in pregame. You know, when do you pull the pitcher? Yeah. Five I'm going to wait too long here tonight, and we'll try to get you the number on the pitcher coming in there for Alexandria. And we'll try to check that. Why don't we grab a timeout during the pitch and change? Here's 25 coming in now for the Valley Cubs. That'll be Connor Land Comer Landon, or Landon Comer, will be the new pitcher for the Valley Cubs. We'll be back. The Yellow Jackets lead at 5 0 on the Friday Night Network. Your pet is an important part of your family that returns love and care unconditionally. And right now is the best time to think about your pet's care for the spring months ahead. Greenbrier Animal Clinic in Anniston has been taking care of pets in the Calton County area for over three decades. Call now and schedule your pet for their annual vaccination vaccinations, flea and tick treatment, or grooming. Dr. Bill Brom and Dr. Elizabeth Main ensure your pet always sees a vet. X-ray lab and the latest surgical facilities on site ensures quality health care. Greenbrier Animal Clinic. Warm hearts, treating cold noses. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one-on-one -on -one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. So Tanner Mize last an inning and two thirds gives up five runs on five hits to Oxford and has been replaced now by Landon Comer. So Comer, tall, lanky young man, will be the new pitcher, Brandon, and uh, not waiting long at all to uh, make that change that time for the Valley Cubs. Yeah, they had to. You know, you get down five to nothing like we was talking about. You know, I, I'm not so sure. Five points. That's a that's a lot when you're playing good baseball. Next up, it'll be Caden Higgins will step to the plate with 
Adams down at first base, two away, but three across here in the second inning for the five-nothing Yellow Jacket lead. Calmer to face the senior here for the Yellow Jackets to get things started. Outside with that first offering, so well outside, as a matter of fact, so ball one. Might take me a few pitches to get that fastball across the plate, but he's throwing hard. Looks like he was going to try to hit a little running bump there. Misses, and one and one now the count. As that was in there for a strike. Mr. Higgins had a double in left field, his first at bat. Sure, he'd like to mirror the performance. Misses with that one. Two and one now. Comer falls behind Caden Higgins. Hi, and that one's in there for a strike, and that one looked like it kind of froze Higgins. Yeah, it did. Right there at the knees, right on the inside corner. Might have found his hot spot. So two and two now. Two away. Homer comes in. Higgins will kind of golf it down. Deep shortstop, and Higgins will beat that throw. In fact, he gets away from Borders. So the runners are going to advance. Higgins digging for second. Not going to be a throw there. So second and third with two out. And Jaron Turner will step to the plate here for the Oxford Yellow Jackets. You know, we talked about that. Foolish penalties. You can't have that in a game like this. It's one thing to drop the ball, but you know when you throw it to the base, you got to make the catch. So Jaron Turner, the designated hitter here for the Yellow Jackets. Six hits now for Oxford in the ball game. And what? we have a ball there on Coma. This had to be. Yep. So Turner's reached by a hit by pitch and now a ball. Now Tanner Mize. Oh, excuse me. Not Tanner Mize. Trey Higgins will step to the plate for the Oxford Yellow Jackets. And he's got the bases loaded. Two away here in the third inning. Mr. Higgins had a ground out his first at bat. And he will take ball one. Blow it away there from Comer. There's a high pop foul, third base side. That's going to be out of play. There went the dodge. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> one and one, the count. One ball, one strike, two outs. Bases are loaded. And that's strike one. So Trey Higgins with the ball of the strike now. One and two is actually the count. That's strike number two after the foul down the third baseline. Got him a little breathing room now. Let's we'll see what Comer comes in with. There's a pitch foul back off behind us. Really did hit somebody's truck. Did it? Mm hmm Was it that gray one sitting over there by the trailer outside? That gray uh, Ford? No, it looks like a gray Chevy. Oh. There's a shot in the left field. Cunningham camped out right there, and he's going to make the catch. That will end the inning, but three more across for the Yellow Jackets. They lead it 5 to nothing after 2 here on the Friday Night Network.
Turn your old junk into quick cash. Head to Metters Auto Core Supply at 7435 Alabama Highway 144 in Alexandria today. They'll pay you cash for catalytic converters, copper, aluminum, brass, steel, cars, automotive cores, appliances, and much, much more. Not sure if they'll buy what you're selling? Call ahead at 256-892-0406. Get the money you need from the junk you don't want. Take it to Metters Auto Core Supply on Highway 144 in Alexandria. You'll leave happy with money in your pocket. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. With our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums, our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. Consistent scoring for the Oxford Yellow Jackets has staked them to a 5-0 lead. They played two runs in the first. They come across with three more in the second inning, and now they're up 5-0, and Sire will go to work with a strike here. Well, actually a ball. They appealed into third base and said it is a ball. Mr. Noah Prim. Yeah, the shortstop for the Valley Cubs. Came up a little short his first at bat with a strikeout, so I'm sure he wants to redeem himself. And he's ahead in the count now, 2-0. There's a shot and the first hit of the night for Alexandria, delivered by Noah Prim. And his battery mate, second baseman Justin Shaw, now will step to the plate for Alexandria. First hit of the night allowed by Sire. Comes here at the top of the third inning. High for ball one. Fast ball. Mr. Shaw had a ground out his first at bat. And he's outside with that one, so ball two. Falling behind in the count, runner on first. That's way outside and high again for Sire. It's a little control issue. And now that'll get a visit to the mound. See, I like that. Don't let calm things get out of hand. Go out there and calm him down. Don't let the score get out of reach. Well, you got a five-run lead. You don't want to start walking back exactly. and making exactly. it easy. You want to make Alexandria earn it if you're Oxford. I just always wondered that. I've watched a lot of baseball. And just never understand why sometimes they leave the pitcher in there a little bit too long or just take a little bit to go out there and calm him down, see what he's thinking. So after the visit, Shaw will step back in at the plate. He's ahead in the count 3-0, and Sire will try to find the strike zone here with one aboard at first base. Noah Prim with the first base hit of the night for Alexandria. And there is a strike from Shaw, from Sire, really. Foul back by Shaw. That'll be strike two, so he got himself another full count here. And would that coach tell him to do that? Must have been something good. Yeah, throw strikes. Throw strikes. And pulls that one foul down the third base side. So the count stays at three and two. We'll do it again. Staying alive. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Bee Gees. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't born yet, but hey. I might have been. Oh, late 70s? Yeah, 77. Really? You're that yeah. young? Yeah. Oh, just a punk. You know? There's a drive and a shot down the left field slide. That's in there for a fair ball. It will be a long single. But hit number two for the Valley Cubs, and they've got something going. Runners in first and second. Nobody out. 
The right fielder, Layton Ellison, will be the next batter up for the Valley Cubs. They'll actually make that Mitch Welch who is up, and Ellison will be in the on deck circle. So Alexandria, their first real threat of the ball game here, with nobody out, two aboard. Mr. Welch walked his first time at bat. He is your catcher for Alexandria. And takes ball, takes strike one. And a little check swing dribbler foul down the first baseline for an 0 and 2 count now on Welch. Don't look like the fastball has quite as much zip as it had a while ago. Yeah. Looks like they got somebody warming up back there in the bullpen. Yeah, a little action there in the Yellow Jacket bullpen now. And that one bounces up, and Sparks able again to keep that in front of it. That does not allow the runners to advance, and that's a, it's a big stop as a catcher. It is. That curveball hit the dirt. So two and two now, evens up the count. And there's a hit. Adams knocks it down, fired over to second. Quickly try to turn the double play, can't do it. And it's beating out the throw was Mitch Welch. And that'll keep runners on the corners now with one away. Good fielding. Well, that saves some runs. Yep. Oxford always plays some good defense, though. Yeah. You know, I noticed that last night. Yeah, they've got to, they've got a good defense behind their pitchers, that's for sure. Ellison now will step in. Chance to drive in a run here. Runners on the corners, one away for the Valley Cubs. And he will take strike one right in there for Brody Sire. Sire trying to pitch his way out of trouble here. Gave up back-to-back -back singles to start the inning. Mr. Ellison had a single his first at bat. Swing and a miss for Ellison. Falls behind 0-2. Looks like he's getting a little bit more zip in his fastball again. Yeah. Here's the pitch, and it's well outside. That was a good choice. You don't got to, when you're ahead of the count like that, you don't have to throw anything to hit. One and two now. Got a loud bang there. I don't know what that was. Still feel my fingers, by the way. That's good. Yeah. Swing and a miss. And Ellison strikes out, throw down to second. And now that's going to allow the run to come home. And Sparks tries to get the third out of the inning, fires down to second, and that allows Noah Prim to bring it home. So the Valley Cubs cut the lead to four. Right, let's go, Nate. Nice run, Nate. Well, now he don't have to worry about the runner on third. All right. And Nate McCallum at the plate now, takes ball one. Runner in scoring position is Ellison. And there's Sparks going to rip it down to third, and he's got him. 
Good throw as Ellison tried to take third on the low pitch, and Oxford gets out of the inning. They give up one, though. Now they come to play one on two hits. After two and a half, the Yellow Jackets lead it by four on the Friday night network. Turn your old junk into quick cash. Head to Metters Auto Core Supply at 7435 Alabama Highway 144 in Alexandria today. They'll pay you cash for catalytic converters, copper, aluminum, brass, steel, cars, automotive cores, appliances, and much, much more. Not sure if they'll buy what you're selling? Call ahead at 256-892-0406. Get the money you need from the junk you don't want. Take it to Metters Auto Core Supply on Highway 144 in Alexandria. You'll leave happy with money in your pocket. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one-on-one -on -one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. Bottom of the third coming up for the Oxford Yellow Jackets. They lead this with five to one through two and a half. Now the Cubs got their first couple of hits of the game in the top of the inning and completed their first run. Got the lead back to four. And Oxford will be looking to answer here in their bottom half of the inning. Carson Lindley, the right fielder, will lead it off. Lindsey, his second crack at it here tonight. Pretty good inning for Alexandria. Yeah, got a couple of hits and yeah. delivered a run on the throw down to second. Left some stranded, but you know, one run, still kind of early in this ball game. Yep. Mr. Carson, he grounded out to second base, his first at bat. High and inside on the first pitch for Comer. His second inning of work here for the Valley Cubs. That one is going to be in there for a strike. Right at the knees. Inside corner. And a little off-speed pitch there. There's a shot down the third baseline. It is a fair ball. And Lindsey rounds it over to second. He'll have a stand-up double as... A little trouble there in the outfield by Allison, the left fielder. Kind of digs that out over in that corner, and Lindsey there with the speed is on second. Nobody out for the Yellow Jackets, and catcher now is going to be number 24. That is Caden Sparks at the plate now for the Yellow Jackets. Mr. Sparks had a double to left field, his first at bat, so the bats are getting hot. you got some hitting coming up. Right over the top of the third base bag that time for Lindsey. Picks up his first hit. Long look back there by Comer now delivers. And there is a nice bunt delivered and firing it down. And in time is Shaw. And quickly the snap throw back to third base by Welch. Almost gets Lindsey, but he gets back in time and may have jammed the ankle a little bit in the process. They kind of try to shake that off. So one away, but the bunt does its job and moves the runner up 90 feet. Got him on third with one away. So good scoring opportunity for Oxford. That yeah, was a beautiful bunt. I was really thought he was going to make it the first. That was a bang bang play by yeah. Alexandria, too, to get him out. Then Bentley got the guy out at third. So I have a discussion here. And home plate now. How are you? No, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. <laughs> Mr. Sire, he had a hit to left field his first at bat. Yeah. Or second at bat. And now we're still going to make a visit at third base to check on Lindsay to see if he's okay. He kind of jammed his knee a little bit. And wants to watch him run. See if he can move. 
and he can. So, young man looks to be fine. Just wanted to check him out and make sure. So now we'll get back to it. The Yellow Jackets leading by four, and a real threat going here. Brody Sire, a pitcher tonight for the Yellow Jackets, a chance to add to his lead. Been pitching good, putting the bat on the ball. Yep. He's been doing good tonight. Had a fly out his first at bat, and the second bat had a hit to left field. Here's a delivery from Comer, and that's in there for a strike. Drive down the left first base line, and it's fair. Fair ball for Sires. He puts it in the corner, and Sire round second, never holds up. Here comes the throw, the drive for three. Out of there. That was a strike thrown from right field. My goodness. Brennan Brown with the strike from right field as Sire tried to leg out a triple. A little cut off and then rips the throw down. Perfectly executed by the Valley Cubs as he hit the second baseman, Justin Shaw, and Shaw delivers a strike for the out. Yeah, right on the head. Good bang, bang, bang play. Now it is Reese Howard will come to the plate with nobody aboard, but Oxford gets the one back they gave up in the top half of the inning and goes back up to a five-run lead. Mr. Howard walked his first at bat, struck out his second. <laughs> Howard stands in against Comer. Late on that one, fouls it straight back. 0-2 the count. Oxford with their eighth hit of the night here in the inning and they've scored six runs off of those eight hits. One run on two hits so far for the Valley Cubs. That one's high from Comer. Brings the count to one and two. Still throwing his fastball, just can't. Just upstairs a little much. Might bring another one upstairs here and see if he can get Howard to chase it. And instead, he'll just bring it right down the left side of the plate for another strikeout, and that'll end the inning. But Oxford scores one on two hits. Yellow Jackets lead it 6-1 to one here on the Friday night. Network. Did you hear? You can get Cable One high-speed internet at an everyday low price. 100 megs, $55 a month, and save with free installation. All you have to do is call 855-CABLE-1. It's time to get the most out of your Wi-Fi with the best whole home streaming and surfing on all your devices. That's 100 megs, $55 a month, plus free installation. Now get high speeds like this at an incredible everyday low price. Get in now at 855-CABLE-1. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer with our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums. Our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. Headed to the top of the fourth inning here as Oxford has been in control of this one from the uh, outset, and they uh, played another run there. They've scored in all three innings. Alexandria, after getting the run in the top of the third, sees that one put back on the board by the Yellow Jackets, and Brody Sire will begin his fourth inning of work, and he'll have Nate McCallum. Exciting right inning. Fielder. Yeah, it was a fun inning. Some good shots in that one. That one's ball one from Sire. Had a 
ground out his first at bat. We have another conversation coming up from a coach and an umpire. This one with the first base umpire. <laughs> Doing their thing again. And having a, a lengthy discussion about something. Mm. Trying to make his point. I'm not sure what uh, what that would be as we just got underway here in the inning. Well, Sean, not happy about something. Wonder what it is. Uh, I'm sure they ended it with Dilly Dilly. Gotta be. So here's McCallum. Stands in, one and no count, Sire. Has a shot right back up by McCallum. Picked up, shortstop straight over to first base. And one away is Caden Higgins. Sends it over to Brendan McCullough. And one away here for the Valley Cubs in the top of the fourth. Now up to the plate is number 14, who we don't have on our roster for the Valley Cubs. We sure don't. It's a high pop foul that's going to hit over there just in front of the Yellow Jacket dugout. Four strike two. Still coming hard with them fastballs. Darkness has descended here on Chakalaka Park. The balmy 52 degrees right now. There is a shot, but right there is Tate Adams, your third baseman, throws an out. So quick two outs here in the top of the fourth for Brody Sire. A lot of people here tonight. Yeah, big crowd on hand for the championship game. Jalen Borders will step in. For the Valley Cubs now, nobody aboard, two away. Swing and a miss by Borders. Borders struck out his first at bat. Now there's a shot, and what a dive by Higgins. Shortstop, long throw, got him. No, they say he beats the throw. Right. First baseman came off the bag, he says. And there comes out to argue the call is Shaw, or rather the coach for Oxford. That's Wesley Brooks. Coach Brooks not liking that one. And we get a look at that one. It was a bang, bang play. I think he's saying that the throw pulls. No, we get to see it, though. Pulls McCullough off the bag. He was just kind of trotting down through there. Uh, <laughs> hard to tell from that angle. Looked like the foot stayed on the bag. He there. didn't move it because he left it on there. Yeah. And the ball is there. So that looks like uh, umpires are going to discuss that call. He's out. I think he's out. He's yeah. out. I thought like, big out. time out. Yeah. Not a little bit. I thought it was a great play there. Because I see that angle, and I'm looking at the angle right here where we're standing. Brennan McCullough, and now they reverse the call. Well, they don't reverse the call. They do say he's safe. And, uh, Let me go down there and tell them they're wrong. They look like it was out. <laughs> Brennan Brown, the right fielder now. will step to the plate here for Alexandria. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Thought it was going to be a 1-2-3 inning for Brody Sire, but... He'll have to face the fourth batter of the inning in Brown. Mr. Brown. As yes, we still. Are they still stewing over that call? I don't know, though. No. They were having a discussion with Alexandria's coach now. There's a lot of talking that goes on in baseball, isn't there? What are they arguing about? They got the, <laughs> he was safe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hello. 
Strike one from Sire. <laughs> that might put a little bit more zip on his fastball. It might do it. Time taken there by Brown. As Sire takes a little long there on the mound. Well, you know, we've seen it on the replay here, you know, like, the throw was there way before the runner was, but you know, we got a perfect view. His foot was on the bag. Yeah, so. it was. Uh, I thought he was out just with, with a naked eye look at it. And there is an inside pitch from Sire. One and one count. go. Sire going to come immediately into the plate. And this is Lowe with ball two. Now Brown taking time again. And inside for a three and one count now. Runner aboard at first. And Sire trying not to lose Brown here. Yeah, his fastball is just a little inside there. There is a swing and a foul up the third base side. So three and two, full count now on Brennan Brown. Now Sire wants a new baseball. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. No pressure, right? Right. No pressure. There's a swing and another foul ball at the third base side. Just out ahead of that off speed a little bit. Yeah, he's trying to stay alive in there and trying to put something in play. Here's the pitch. And strike three. Nope, gets away from the catcher, so it's going to end up putting two on board. Two out. First one we've seen get past Sparks in the two nights we've been watching him play. He's done a really good job with that. He has. It's going to happen. The pass ball will result in another base runner, and Sire's got to be feeling like, what have I got to do to get out of this inning? <laughs> Throw a strike. Well, or maybe a couple He of feels them. like he's out of the inning twice now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's thrown a strike. <laughs> yeah, that was a strike. And now we're going to have another meeting. That's what we do with the government. See, we have a meeting you have to a talk meeting? about when we're going to have another meeting. Yeah, you can have a meeting to talk about the next meeting? Mm hmm Okay. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Ryan Taylor. Looks like he's going to step in and pinch hit here. Uh, he may just be in the on-deck circle. We'll see who the batter's going to be. And it is going to be Ryan Taylor for the first time tonight. Left-handed batter. Pitching there to Taylor is, I guess, a, a little high for ball one. You look like a little off speed there. Swing and a miss for Taylor. Evens it up at one and one. Right. 
Long look back at second by Sire. Now brings it to the plate. It's fouled away for strike two by Taylor. One ball, two strikes, so he can throw in some junk if he wants to. He won't throw nothing too junky because it might get by your catcher and be in trouble. He might try a little something all outside. And there's a little bit of a pitch out of the left almost there. Two mm -hmm. and two the count now. See, I'd have swung at that. Yeah, I know. That's why you never started. <laughs> Swinging a miss, tips and up, gets just a little piece of it. So he stays alive, does Taylor. Just barely got a piece of that one. What's amazing, sometimes you watch Major League Baseball and they'll sit there with two, three balls, two strikes, and sit there and foul five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them back. That's why I never have time to watch an entire Major League Baseball game. I got to go. Got to go. And time taken by Taylor. There's no foul tips in golf, is there? No. It counts if you hit there's it. some fouls, but there's no foul tips. Yeah. And I learned the other day that if you hit a tree on a drive and it kicks it right back in the fairway and kicks it forward, if you didn't call it, you don't get to clean it. You know, that's a good shot. So it was a bank shot. It's like pool. So you didn't call it first. Come on. Huh. I everybody, did not know that. Everybody that knows me knows I've hit that tree a lot of times. I'm going to go home and watch Happy Gilmore. You, <laughs> I am. I just know that I was trying to think. I've got one of them fire sticks that's jail broke. Yeah. I'm going to watch Happy Gilmore. You just admitted to the world you're going to do something illegal. Oh, Lord. We're on the air. There's a pitch from Sire. That's going to be Miss Lowe and has run the count full to Ryan Taylor here with two aboard, two away here for Alexandria in the top of the fourth. That $29 fee I have to pay. There's a swing and a miss. Strikes him out. Sire gets out of the inning. And Oxford leads by five. Headed to the bottom of the fourth inning here on the Friday night network. Turn your old junk into quick cash. Head to Metters Auto Core Supply at 7435 Alabama Highway 144 in Alexandria today. They'll pay you cash for catalytic converters, copper, aluminum, brass, steel, cars, automotive cores, appliances, and much, much more. Not sure if they'll buy what you're selling? Call ahead at 256-892-0406. Get the money you need from the junk you don't want. Take it to Metters Auto Core Supply on Highway 144 in Alexandria. You'll leave happy with money in your pocket. Did you hear? You can get Cable One high-speed internet at an everyday low price. 100 megs, $55 a month, and save with free installation. All you have to do is call 855-CABLE-1. It's time to get the most out of your Wi-Fi with the best whole home streaming and surfing on all your devices. That's 100 megs, $55 a month, plus free installation. Now get high speeds like this at an incredible everyday low price. Get it now at 855-CABLE-1. Just about set for the bottom of the fourth inning as Comer wrapping up his warm-up pitches here momentarily, and we'll get the Yellow Jackets back on offense. They lead this one 6-1 to one after a bit of a strange top of the fourth inning. Alexandria with another hit, but uh, not able to get a run out of it. And a little controversy with that one as Borders was called safe at first base, and I sure have enjoyed our instant replay tonight. I have. It's been a, been good. They've done a good job. Right on it. Right on it. That's what we're talking about. And our camera people are brave. <laughs> Those teams look real calm, calmer than the fans. They yeah. get into it. First baseman Brennan McCullough will step to the plate now for Oxford. He grounded out to second his first at bat and had a single to second. And there's Como delivers a strike on the first pitch. Nothing fancy, just throwing it over the plate. And 
McCullough will take ball one there. That one misses a little high and outside. That one's going to be on the corner, so strike two. Count goes to one and two now on McCullough. Delivered a grand slam last night here in the game against Jacksonville. Fouls one straight back, stays alive here in the at bat. See, if I was going to go against a pitcher with a hit that corner, I'd just get me a long bat. A long bat. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can hit all the corners. <laughs> There's a shot. Ooh. So McCullough delivers a single. Take a big turn there at first, but we'll try it back. So one aboard with nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth inning for the Yellow Jackets. And Tate Adams coming to the plate, third baseman for Oxford. Oxford third baseman number nine, Tate Adams. Tate Adams, his first at bat. He got hit by a pitch and had a single and scored two runs. There's a shot right to the third baseman, and Shaw's going to try to swing it over, and it's out of the hands, and that's going to be out. Called out. Is he giving the out signal? He's giving the out signal. Yeah. But he's still standing. Yeah, he's still standing at the plate. Dropped the ball. So what they're saying is it's not out, that he drops the ball, didn't hold it. Well, I'll just have to look at that again yeah. on the instant replay because I thought he was out and then he was going to throw the ball and then that's so when too. it came out. Well, he's still standing at second base. I thought he was out and just lost the throw after he had tagged the base. Now, if he deems he came in there with feet first trying to do damage, I think that could be a double play, right? Yeah. Now they say he's out. So one away. So that'll be Caden Higgins who will step to the plate. Tate Adams will be at first base for the Yellow Jackets with one away. Caden Higgins, he uh, had a double to left field and uh, hit shortstop. There's a high fly ball out into center field and drops. Coming hard to second, going to have to slide to be safe, and he is as the uh, ball is dropped out there in center field, and the right center right fielder kind of crossed in front right as the ball was coming down. That may have caused the error out there, first error of the night on the Valley Cubs. I don't know if we've got a look at that, but it really looked like yeah, that crossing in front of him. That and, uh, right field, they were kind of crossing paths. And Who's yeah. going to get it? Me? No, yeah. I got it. No, yeah. you get it. Designated hitter Jaron Turner now steps to the plate. He got hit by a pitch. And then he got reached on a ball. Comer, drive by Turner. Deep left field. That is going to be off the wall. One run is going to score. Two runs are going to score for the Yellow Jackets. And Turner is safe at second base with a double. I thought that one was heading to the parking lot. That is a uh, long way out there. I'd say that was 370 feet. No, that was uh, that was hit well. Off the wall stand up double for Jared Turner and now Oxford increases the lead to eight to one over the Valley Cubs here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. One away. And Turner down at second with the stand-up double and talking with Comer, a little visit there to kind of calm him down. Now we'll get a, a pinch runner out there for Turner. You know, we talked about that in the game. No crazy errors. You're going to drop a ball every now and then, but you can't drop pop flies when there's runners on the base. And crazy errors will cost you. Yeah. Next guy up drills a double in the second uh, in the left field. And 
Suddenly two more runs are across, and mm -hmm. the Yellow Jackets continue the streak, having scored in every inning tonight in this one. And they lead it eight to one. Now we've got Trey Higgins will step to the plate here for Oxford with runner aboard down at second and running in scoring position. He grounded out and plied out his first two at bats. And that one's low and inside for ball one. bit inside for ball two. So Higgins ahead, 2-0 in the count. One away, one aboard. He needs to get him a strike here, get a little confidence pitch going. And there's a shot going to be right to shortstop. Prim fires it across, pulls the first baseman off the bag, and another run is in for Oxford's second error of the inning for the Valley Cubs as that one was well wide of first base on the throw by Prim. And now it's nine to one, Oxford on top and still a runner at second. Let's see it here on the instant replay, the hit to Prim and looked like it was gonna be just a simple play, but drew him off the bag. And like we said at the pregame, you can't have those little costly errors. Yep, and now trip to the mound for the Valley Cubs. And you know baseball's full of errors. I mean, that's how you win, but but, you know, like I was talking about, it's some costly errors, you know, throwing it to the wrong bag or just, you just can't do that against Oxford. Well, they'll make you pay. And now nine to one, they're threatening to blow this one wide open. Very close to that right now. It's a dominant performance here so far by this Oxford Yellow Jacket team. And with that being said, Oxford couldn't do it to Alexandria. They'd be getting the best of them. Sure. They both can make you pay for mistakes. Now we've got Hayden Green stepping to the plate here for the Yellow Jackets. I think that's his first plate appearance of the night. That's what I've got. Sounds like he's got a big fan base here tonight. Yeah. Pitch is outside, gets away from Wilts behind the plate, and that will advance the run to the third base. So all kinds of problems defensively for Alexandria in this inning. Yes, sir. Just can't have that. One error turns into two, then three, and then you got run scoring. It just gets away from you. Swing and a miss by Green. Evens account at one and one. for a strike with a little bit of a delayed call by the umpire there. So one and two the count. And that one's fouled straight back. Out of play. One ball, two strikes, one out. And a runner on third. So a good pop fly and bring him in. Green looking for a little more than that. And he's going to step out for a moment. Now gets ready to go. High and tight with ball two there. Ooh, sweet chin music. Two balls, two strikes. Had a little mustard on that pitch. Strike three looking. Hayden Green. So that will bring Sparks to the plate with two away. Runner on third here for Oxford. Count 
Caden Sparks. He had a double to left field and laid down a bunt. There's the ball outside. One and over count. Strike one in there to Sparks, so it evens it up at one and one. Good fastball. Foul back. Good cut at it. A little late on that one, maybe. One and two now to Caden Sparks. Trying to get the runner home from third base. Got to have a hit to do it with two away. Mm -hmm. Got a few pitches to play with. Probably throw it outside on him. And that's outside. Two and two now. He's probably going to throw him a little high fastball here around the shoulders and see if he can lay off of it. Foul tip straight back. Behind the plate stays at two and two. <laughs> that would have made a flatter, more hollow sound. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Swing, high, pop up. Is it going to get out? It's going to drop in no man's land. Wow. Another run is in for the Yellow Jackets as that was just a perfectly placed little pop up dropped in between second baseman and the right fielder in no man's land, and the Yellow Jackets lead it by nine. Good hit. Oh, yeah, Brody Sire now back to the plate here for Oxford. He's had a fly out. He had a hit to left field, and uh, he was thrown out from right field on that bang-bang play at third base. Trying to stretch a sink double into a triple. Mm -hmm. You know, he's had a hard, he's got a night where he's played hard. The uniform's dirty tonight for Brody Sire. So he's been digging. Busy night. So big inning here for Oxford. Four runs here in the bottom of the fourth to extend that lead to 10 to 1. And there's a shot deep into center field, but back there. And making the catch is your center fielder for the Valley Cubs. And that will end the inning, but Oxford puts four more across. They lead this one 10 to 1 after four and a half. And you know, Brandon. We take our mid-game break here. It's presented by Clark's Lawn and Landscape Service in Jacksonville. Of course, uh, got a little David Clark up there. His crews, look, they, they can do commercial or residential landscaping, and they also do lawn design, installation, and maintenance. Oh, wow. They also do exceptional stonework that ranges from your poolside to your retainer walls to your patio and fire pits. True works of art that's uniquely yours. Yeah, nothing much more fun than a fire pit on a cold night like this. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you want to discuss all your landscaping needs, give David a call, 256-452-8752 today. And if you want to see more of Clark's Lawn and Landscape Services work, well, just follow them on Facebook. For all your commercial or residential needs, call the best in the business, Clark's Lawn and Landscape Service today. There you go. We'll head to the top of the fifth inning now. Yellow Jackets have uh, gotten it a little closer to the 10 runs as they played four there in the bottom of the inning. See, you hot. You're just now putting on one of your jackets. I'm, I'm what? Hot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were sweating a little earlier. You're not sweating now, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> you okay? I'm just looking at this. It's a packed house tonight, though. See a lot of hot chocolate being passed around. Yeah. Nobody's brought us one. No. No. I ain't got no popcorn bucket. I ain't got nothing. You got nothing. Nothing. Noah Prim steps to the plate. Short stop for the Valley Cubs. He struck out his first at bat, but then uh, he came out of there with that real loud single over second base Swing, earlier. Swing and a miss there for Prim. 
Uh, the first pitch from the new pitcher for Oxford. Now he's going to drive one into left field, and that one is put out. Now Justin Shaw, the second baseman, will make his way to the plate, and I didn't get the number on our new pitcher. Me neither. Brody Sire has moved over to play center field now for the Yellow Jackets. As a ball popped over to the first base side out of play, bounces up in the stands. Mr. Shaw had a ground out his first at bat, and then he had a hit with a single to left field his second at bat. I believe that might be Hayden Green who's come into play at the pitcher spot. We'll see. Thought it might be a 13. And there's a little dribbler for strike two for Justin Shaw. And that one low and inside for ball one. Strike three. Goodness gracious. Nice pitch. So two away here quickly in the top half of the fifth inning for Alexandria. He's just Mitch throwing. Welch. He's doing some good stuff. Yeah, he is. There's a ball inside to the catcher for the Valley Cubs, Mitch Welts. And that's in there wow. for a strike. He's humming it. Jeez. Fastball right there on the corner. Hit pitcher hits Welch with that one. Comes inside. And Welch Ooh. not happy about it. No. I don't mind getting hit by a knuckleball, but I don't know about his fastball hurting the hip. That's got to hurt. I think that is a 13, isn't it? Bad eyes. Mm. 15 is actually the pitcher. We don't have a 15. That's going to leave a strawberry. Yeah. Man. Well, you know, he don't want to hit you. Wants to get you out. Mm -hmm. No reason for that to be intentional. Oh, this no, one. not at all. Here's the pitch for Leighton Ellis. Late on that one, strike one. Yeah, I thought it was Hayden Green, 13, is the pitcher, so. Ellison coming into the warm press box. Ellison had him a single earlier. Oh, and two now the count on Ellis. Ellison. Green just ready to deliver. He's doing some good stuff other than hitting that batter. Time taken there by Ellison. Swing and a miss. Maybe tipped a little bit. Going to go down to first base. And... Three out, three up, three down for the Valley Cubs. And they're going to the bottom of the fifth inning, trailing 10 to 1 here on the Friday Night Network. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one on one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. Turn your old junk into quick cash. Head to Metters Auto Core Supply at 7435 Alabama Highway 144 in Alexandria, 
today. They'll pay you cash for catalytic converters, copper, aluminum, brass, steel, cars, automotive cores, appliances, and much, much more. Not sure if they'll buy what you're selling? Call ahead at 256-892-0406. Get the money you need from the junk you don't want. Take it to Metters Auto Core Supply on Highway 144 in Alexandria. You'll leave happy with money in your pocket. We're back here at Chakalaka Park, headed to the bottom of the fifth inning now. The Yellow Jackets, if they plate one here, this one is over. They lead it 10 to one. Reese Howard will be the first up. Been an interesting game. Yeah. New pitcher for the Valley Cubs as well, but I'm not sure. I can't read his uniform. On the number, yeah. Okay, so I'm not the only one. No. I wasn't going to bring my binoculars just being this close, but. Probably need them. I know it. Ball one on the first offering for Reese Howard. His first at bat, he walked, struck out, and struck out again. All in his first at bat. And there's a hit straight back to the pitcher. 27 is the number, and we don't have a 27 on the roster, I don't believe, so. We do. Ben McCullough now will change sides of the plate as he'll face the left-hander. He'll bat righty this time. Mr. McCullough grounded out his uh, first at bat, and he got a single to second and a single to shortstop. Here's the first pitch to McCullough. Is in there for a strike. Foul tip, 0 oh 2, quickly on McCullough. Nice off speed pitch there. Got him a swing late on. There's McCullough going to bounce one. Quick play by the third baseman, not in time. Oh, he does call him out. What? Oh, I'm going to have to see the replay. Oh, we need Let's to see, see the FNN yeah. Friday night replay. There's a throw from Slayton, they say, was in time. And it looks like it is just by a half, quarter of a step, maybe. Ball is in the glove, I think. So he did get him. Close. Close play. Another one of those close ones at first base. Good job by the umpire. Got that one right. And that one goes past the catcher. Tate Adams, your batter now. Close. But I was wrong. He was out. He was out. And there's a drive. But is it going to be? It took the wrong angle, and that's going to get to the wall. That'll be a stand-up double for Tate Adams. Runner in scoring position, and Caden Higgins will come to the plate now for the Yellow Jackets with a chance to end this one. As that was another one that was drilled out there in left field. About 370 feet. How long is a football field? 400 feet? 100 yards. Well, I know that. What's that in feet? That's 400 feet. Three feet. 300 feet, yeah. 300 feet. That was a long shot. There's a strike, Kim. You know, in golf, that's only a sandwich. Oh. Wish <laughs> I had a sandwich. Okay, biggest. Behind 0 and 1. Hits one right back to the pitcher. Knocks it down, but everybody's going to be safe. 
So runners on the corners with two away. And here's Jaron Turner to the plate. He delivered a stand-up double his last time at bat. And again, Oxford here with a chance to end this one in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Mercy. Well, Mr. Turner, he got hit by a pitch, a ball, and then he hit a double and rode in two runs. So he's telling me he's been on base every time he's been up tonight. That is exactly what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He got hit by the knuckleball. First pitch in there for a strike. And Oxford puts this one away in the bottom of the fifth. And the, gets away from the catcher. Does it end right here? Safe. This one is over. Oxford has won the 2018 at Calhoun County Baseball Tournament. They beat wow. Alexandria by the final of 11 to 1 tonight here in five innings. As we'll get the replay on that one. Just gets away from Welch. And sliding in safe at the plate was Tate Adams. And with that, the Oxford Yellow Jackets are the 2018 Calhoun County Baseball Tournament champions here tonight. So uh, it's been fun yeah. bringing you the three games over the last two nights. And we'll have more baseball action coming up this season. And we'll see you from Donovan next Monday afternoon. Falcon Territory, here we go. So make sure you tune in for that. For, uh, we'll have White Plains at Donahoe on uh, Monday, regular season action. At 3.50 p.m. right here on the Friday Night Network. That'll be our next broadcast. We'd like you to join us for that. And again, our final tonight, the Yellow Jackets win it here 11 to 1 for our producer Jim Jacobs, for all of our camera guys, and my partner Brandon Steele. Good night. Chocolate Park in Oxford.